on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. I believe we are going through a period in cryptocurrency history that will be looked back upon as one of the great crypto purges. So Warren Buffett, one of the most successful investors in the world, is famously quoted as saying, when the tide goes out, we find out who isn't wearing swimming trunks or bottoms. So this applies directly to cryptocurrency assets because in 2017, the market was booming, the tide was high, everyone's private parts were safely covered below the waterline. Over the course of 2018, however, as you well know, the tide has been consistently getting lower and lower and lower. And with the recent drop in the price of Bitcoin below $6,000, the waterline is now sufficiently below waist height, allowing us to see who was bluffing and who really has the cajones. So that's the topic I want to cover in today's video. If I can find points to timestamp, I will do so in the description. Today's episode is brought to you by Cryptoversity, which is my online school that teaches courses on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. You can learn a variety of cryptocurrency topics such as monetary history, cryptocurrency security and crypto asset trading. It also offers you the opportunity to earn a passive income in Bitcoin every single month for helping me to spread cryptocurrency education with no selling required. So check out the links in the description to learn more about that. So the great crypto purge, let's start with EOS because everyone loves that project, don't they? Remember in 2017 when everyone was absolutely losing their mind because Block One, the developers of the EOS software, were consistently selling thousands of Ether. They sold thousands when it hit $1,000 per Ether. They sold the same amount when it hit $700. They sold another load when it hit $500 and so on. Doesn't that now look like a wise move in retrospect? This is one of the reasons why EOS got my attention in the first place because it was being developed by real business people who understood things like the business cycle. So when the tide was high, they didn't get faked out. Uh, they did the wise thing and they spread their risk. They didn't leave all the money in crypto. Now that the tide is low, they are well prepared and well positioned and can continue to develop the EOS IO software without skipping a beat. A low EOS token price, in fact, does put strain on block producers, for example. However, a lower token price also makes it cheaper for app developers to buy the network resources that they need. And more apps boosts EOS network adop adoption and ultimately leads to more demand for the network, pushing the token price back up again. So that's kind of a self-correcting mechanism right there. So for now, the most efficient block producers that provide the best service, the highest performance at the lowest cost, they're going to ones, be the ones that remain profitable. So what a downswing in the business cycle does primarily is it returns the market to a pure meritocracy, which literally means merit from the Latin word merio and crassi from the Greek kratos, meaning strength and power. So meritocracy is where power and strength are acquired, acquired by those who are the best performers. Also a concept related to survival of the fittest. So whether you like EOS or not as a project, from a detached investor's point of view, I feel more confident holding tokens in a project that has abundant resources than say Ethereum Classic, who lost one of its core development teams recently as per their own announcement two days ago. So here's a tweet from ETC Dev. And they say, unfortunately, they've had to shut down ETC Dev and all their current activities effective immediately. Now, they did ask the community of ETC investors to donate money because they were struggling uh, to help them keep, keep them going. They did a poll and more than 50% of the community said they were not willing to donate. ETC Dev also tried to find private investors, but were unsuccessful there as well. Why is that? Probably because private investors are quite strict and they want to see a solid business model before they put their money at risk. And they also want to see 
how they're going to get their return on investment, and they want to see that as a high probability. We have to assume, therefore, in this case, that ETC Dev wasn't able to present an appealing enough investment opportunity to these private investors and were therefore forced to shut down. This isn't the end of Ethereum Classic, though. They are only one of three core development teams that are working on the Ethereum Classic software. There is ETC Co-op and there is ETC Labs, and they will continue to develop the software. So this crypto purge that I'm talking about, there's the possibility of lots of different types of entities being purged. The collapse of an actual cryptocurrency is likely to be the very last thing that happens once all the other dominoes have fallen. You know, these networks are structured in such a way that they are very, very resilient. So the networks are the ones that are most resilient. Referring back to a story from last week, in fact, this was when we found out that Steemit Inc., kind of the core developers of the Steam blockchain, they were reducing their staff by 70%. Now, weak team members who work for these cryptocurrency companies, they're likely to be the first thing that gets purged. You know, people are expensive to employ, but star performers are worth their weight in gold. So the smartest companies with the most resources take the opportunity when the business cycle turns down to scoop up world-class employees when those world-class employees lose their job in the downward business cycle. So this is like transferring the most valuable assets, the world-class employees, from the worst performing companies to the best performing companies. It's like that old adage of being greedy when others are fearful. We normally only use that when we're talking about the prices of crypto assets or assets in general going down, but it also applies to assets in terms of employees. So world-class team members are also world-class assets to be invested in. So as the uh, crypto purge continues, expect to see it manifest in three key categories. Number one, and this will probably happen first, is the purging of the lowest performing team members from certain projects. So most of this we probably won't hear about publicly because it's private matters of private companies. But we do know, for example, that Steam Inc. chose to tell us about the uh, purge of their employees. We also found out in October, just gone, that Coinbase also confirmed they were laying off some staff. This was actually reported by uh, Yahoo Finance. This is an article from Bitcoin.com. And uh, Coinbase don't confirm the exact numbers of employees they were laying off, but they do confirm that they were purging some. Then we have articles like this where consensus tightened their belt. You can read that article in its fullest if you wish. So that's the first major category. The first, in terms of the sequence, will be the purging of the worst performing employees. Secondly, will be the, secondly, that was three, two, purging of the weakest businesses. So like ETC Dev, that's one of the businesses, But this will include all the infrastructure providers, including wallet developers, miners, exchanges, and so on. So the companies that purge staff, they're actually lowering their cost base, and that actually increases their chances of survival. So if, say, let's just use Steam Inc. as an example, because we know they've already done phase one, which is to purge 70% of their staff, the next step is that if that new leaner organization cannot survive, then the company itself will be purged as a phase two. That then takes us on to phase three, the third phase in the sequence. If the other two, if the other two uh, phases fail to make the project sustainable, we get category number three, which is the purging of the weakest coins. So this will come at the end when the best staff members are gone and then the best performing companies are gone. Then if the coin doesn't solve a real problem and solves it effectively, then the project itself may go away in its entirety. However, even the weakest coins may not die completely as long as there are a handful of enthusiasts that are willing to continue to support it. As long as you've got a few miners 
and a few developers and a few traders, it could survive indefinitely, even if it's relatively obscure. One final point that relates to institutional investors and regulators. When the big money comes, the big money is going to invest in assets that do not carry a regulatory risk. I'm talking about all the ICOs in 2017 that claimed they were selling tokens that were fuel for a product that didn't yet exist. The utility token argument. So these are projects that the big money investors are going to avoid like the plague. They'll be much more interested in the likes of Bitcoin and Ethereum that have already been cleared by the US regulators as not securities. If you build a working product and then sell the fuel, that's much better from a regulatory point of view. Now this relates to the crypto purge because big money investors will give their resources to more compliant projects who will then outcompete the non-compliant projects and that is assuming if the regulators don't get to them first. But that is all I've got for you today. If you like this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. If you would like to get rid of the ads and cryptocurrency rewards and support the show, check out the website, thecryptoverse.show. Click on that big blue button that says get paid to watch and it will tell you how you can get rid of the ads, support the show and earn cryptocurrency rewards as a viewer and a listener. Other than that, I will be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying, bye for now.